Hey friends, welcome back to the show. If you're here today and you haven't been here before, I'm Nicole Palmer, strategist, brand coach, and writer behind Nicole Williams Collective, a strategic consultancy and lifestyle site for Korea and business-minded women ready to unleash the power of their voice, vision, talent, and confidence so they can leave their mark on the world. Okay, so I'm a mom, and sometimes as moms, we have a tendency of feeling, you know, feeling like sometimes we're at the end of our ropes. I got two kids. One's a much older. I have a little one. She's about 10. But sometimes we we, we do go there. And, and that's whether or not you're married or not, or whether you have one child or you have multiple kids. You know, we, we all get there. We feel the stress, the burden, the anxiousness, the overscheduling when it comes to being mom. But you, if you're a struggling mom today, I hope that you are going to find this episode as some encouragement um, for you, because today we're going to talk about common mistakes parents make, and of course, how to fix them. And to help me with that, we have a special guest. We got Erin Heidelberger. And of course, she is a mom of three boys, a certified parent coach, and of course, the president and CEO of Get Mom a full-service parent coaching firm dedicated to helping moms get it together. Okay, so Erin assists moms with parenting issues pretty much across the board. So I guess you name it, she will work with you on that. And all with the ultimate goal of empowering moms to be happy, confident, guilt-free parents. And don't we all need that? So of course, I want you guys to help me welcome um, Erin to the show. Welcome, Erin. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Hi, guys. It's Erin. Get mom. Okay, so first, tell us um, about yourself and what it is you do. I know I, I talked a little bit about that, but tell us a little bit more about what you do. So I work with moms, strictly moms, because you know what? We are, we are, we are the SHIT. We're the ones who are holding it down, whether we work or not. Uh -huh. And I felt that when I was raising, so my oldest son is 19 and I know I only look 25. I know. Don't worry. Ah. My oldest is 25. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so when I started out parenting, there was, all right, you guys, there was no reality TV. I know this is hard to believe, Instagram did not exist, nor Facebook. And I didn't know how to get it together. I didn't know how to be a mom. I didn't know how to get off like the anxiousness and, and my heart racing and trying to be that perfect stay at home mom. And I just started reaching out to other like-minded moms, moms that, that were like cool, like cool and like calm, like me, not like freak shows and because I feel it's really important that you find like you find your personal freak show who speaks to you so speaks but, to you right right but not like the freak show where you're like oh my goodness um so I just started seeking out tools and solutions because I wasn't going to read an 800 page tomb from a male pediatrician to tell me how to sleep train, how to get it together, how to get off that parenting merry-go-round. Because I felt, you know what? I, you know, we only have 18 summers with our child, right? And I was just, ra I was racing. I, I was like, we would leave the grocery store and then we get, get in the car seat and then we go to Target. Um, but I had to get home and I had to Swiffer and I, and I couldn't relax unless all the dishes were cleaned in the sink. And I thought, oh, yeah. I thought, you know what? this isn't going to work. I don't want to live this way. And so I started reaching out to my like-minded moms for solutions. And then I just, we had another kid and then we had another kid. And then I figured out, you know what? There's a lot of calm in, in sleep and schedule and saying no and finding your balls and your confidence to like live how you want to live guilt-free. So that's how get mom, that's, 10 years ago, how get my okay. About. okay, awesome. And then, so when you decided, what was that thing that made you decide that, okay, I'm going to start this get mom thing? And, um, and how did that grow from there? Well, no, thank you for asking because it really is a pivotal moment. I remember the moment I was driving to the gym 
with my second child. I had dropped the first child off at preschool. I had the second kid. We were going to the gym. We're going to do 830 to 1030 daycare. Um, then we're going to get home. We're going to have lunch. We were going to watch the he. My child was going to nap for three hours because right. you know what? when your kid is on a schedule, let me tell you, mom, you can sit on your couch or work or do laundry like stress free because your kid isn't freaking out. My kid was napping three hours. I was on the couch watching The View, which, by the way, I still take a siesta to The View to this day. And I think they're on year 25 or 30. What? Like, I'm the most like scheduled, <laughs> ritualistic person. And my my girlfriends were watching this lifestyle that I had created. And, and they were like, what? You're like, what are you talking about? You just watch TV for three hours? But, but you're still at the gym. You're going to happy hour with your husband. You're right. just... Your kid isn't freaking out. Like no one wants to freak out. I don't want to freak out. I want my kid to freak out. I don't want your kid to freak out. And we're driving to the gym on this pivotal day that kicked off Get Mom. And my girlfriend called me and said, You need to have a business. This is and and let's just let's just rewind. I, at this point, I was not even on Facebook because believe it or not, I am like an introvert. Mm -hmm. I don't want, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want anyone right. to bother me. I don't want to date you. I don't want to go to co like mom's coffee. And she's like, no, you need a business. And then I thought, oh gosh, then I'm going to have to join the Facebook. And then these high school people are going to come on the, like, no, 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 no. She's like, nope, we're, we're going to have a business because this is what you, how you are leading your family. There's right. something that you're doing that other families aren't doing. And right. I'm going to help you. And so it was literally, I remember the stop sign. I was like, all right. And, and, and I was pregnant with a third kid. We were building our fourth home. And I was like, yeah, F it. Let's do it. I'm right. all in the place of yes without losing my mind, without freaking out. Yeah. So that's how Get Mom came about. Okay. All right. Sounds good. And so what does a day, uh, what does a week look like for you um, these days? What does a week look like? All right. Well, I am all about flying either being on an airplane or being in my house unshowered in a white robe and just hibernating with my family. So right. let's go with you know, a typical day at home is 7 a.m. The kids are, well, I, I'm an early riser. This right. is when I like dig in, lean in, get like all my hard thinking done. Just I'm just a natural morning person. Right. I get up in the fives. I have coffee. I make a fire. I love Instagram stories. The right. more, the more whoever's listening who wants to like send me their Instagram stories and be my friend, I will watch your stories. And if you are like doing fabulous things, I am here for it. Like right. I don't care if I have not left the states in forever. Anyone who's doing glamorous, beautiful things, like I, I'm, I'm down. Right. So I love Instagram stories, and then I make sure that the bed is made. You know what? It just, it just gives me. Oh yeah, there's the thing about making the bed. My oh. daughter will get on my bed. I was like, oh no, no, get on the floor. I'm like, no, no my no. bed needs to stay made. I'm gonna smooth it. Get right. on the floor and that, and now I'm going to re fluff the pillows. And that just, and you right. know, I, I did a lot of therapy to kind of let that kind of stuff go because right. even though <laughs> I know it soothes, it like serves my brain. Yeah, but it's just that thing that makes you feel it's thing. like, yeah, the day is, I'm ready. So the boys get up at seven. Um, I have a child in college, which by the way, he just came home from his first spring break, uh, like 24 hours ago. He's like, mom, I did my laundry. Like my room is tidy. And I was like, all right, get kid. Like I, I <laughs> you make me so happy. Like you made me so happy. I mean, I don't think my middle kid, I mean, you know, he's never going to listen to this, but right. middle kid, you know, so I'm, I'm really enjoying older kid because middle kid he's, yeah, right. that's okay. but that's okay. Um, the boys get up at 7am. This is a school week. Right. You know, this, for example, we have school, um, they have breakfast and then like, I'm, a huge advocate of just being Zen because right. I, I don't want the kids to get out of the car at school drop off uh -huh. with me being derogatory or negative or bringing up their shitastic behavior from the night before or them being right. 
D-I-C-K's, you know, right. in the morning. I feel it's so important because, you know, the morning is so fast. Our kids get up at seven and then we are in the car by 7.40 a.m. And then we're quote unquote done with them 15 minutes later. So 7.55. And so there's, there's such a short amount of minutes to right. really set the tone and, and, and just be, I try to be Zen airing. Right. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not like rainbows and unicorns. I am very straight to the point when they F up. Right. But I feel the morning is the time I want them to be rested. I want them to be fed. I want right. them to know what's happening at the end of the day. So even though my 15 year old is totally ignoring me in the car, I feel it's appropriate as a mother to communicate. Right. This is what hap this is what's happening after school. Right. This is what's gonna go on. Because right. I don't want any surprises. I want right. everyone to be right. We want everyone to be in the loop. So then after by like eight oh five, I I'm like peace out, peace out, kids. <laughs> um and often uh we have a we have a pandemic dog. Yep, we are one of those people. Right. So um, because of where we live, I'm able to take the doggy to work out and right. then I'm typically home by 9 a.m. And then I go back to like my less hard work because now right. I've been awake for, you know, four hours. And you know what? I'm I'm not going to lie. Like those kids attitudes, they still beat me down. You know, it's it's not it's not free. Right. You know, those attitudes. Like I'm very aware. Oh, yeah, kid, they will challenge you. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. And it takes a lot of energy to not get sucked into their black hole of misery. Right. They, right. You know what? Um, and you know what? I forgot to mention the first thing I do when I wake up, I meditate. Right. I am the biggest fan of headspace meditation. It's 10 minutes. It changed my life in 30 days. And, and that really has changed everything to keep me Zen Irene and, and from being reactive. Right. And and I totally understand that because I've started in, I incorporating in myself, like doing this whole slow morning. I actually moved my calendar to it's not open. My calendar is not open from nine. My calendar is open from 10. Mm. So my little one, she or she gets on our bus at 715, 716. I come back in and, you know, I'm like, if I felt usually I just lay on the couch and relax and whatever. I got me a stepper now so I can get into stepper. There's a gym, but sometimes you don't feel like getting out before you home. And it's like, OK, but I got the stepper. So every time I take my break from the computer, I, I'm now getting on that. But, you know, there's this thing about starting your morning slow now where you're not rushing. You know, you get a cup of tea, take my time. I boot up my computer. I'll go out on the balcony and, and just do it slow. And it's such a huge difference because you're not on this constant treadmill. Like the may, may, like, go, 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 go. Like, right. do, do you have your snacks? Do you have your water? Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah it I feels like it. you're just in that you, and you don't ever stop. And that feeling is like, it feels so much different. Your wellness, you, you know, and, and I tell, you know, it's all about also creating that, that those boundaries around um, yourself, um, changing the price of access to you. And, and ah, how you handle, handle stuff. How do you speak to the whole idea for you? Have you, you know, were you ever in that place where I know you have your husband and your kids, but were you in that place where you're everything to everyone and you're here, they're there. And it's like, you know, as it, as it means to change in the price of access, because we feel like we have to answer to every request made of us, especially as women. Oh my God. I mean, every, every hour I feel that I am the, Default parent. Have you heard of that term, the default parent? It's not like that. Okay. So the default parent is what you just mentioned. How okay. you you are you are it. Oh, Every, for everyone. Okay. It, right. Everyone relies on you. And what I have started, yes. So I, I have been the default parent for 19 years. And I think again, it goes back to like, well, how we first started talking. We as mothers, we're the, we're the first ones to feel our, our baby's life in, right. in us. And our partners, like they don't really get on board. We're lucky if they get on board in nine months. I mean, I'm telling you, right. a lot of my <laughs> clients, partners, they come to me because the partner still thinks that he, she, they is a babysitter. I'm like, oh, right. no, 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 no. It took two of you to tangle to make this life. Like, we're going to, 
let's get in the game. We're going to lean right. in, right? You're not a babysitter. You're not just going to do one night a week. You're going to do seven days a week because right. this is your kid. Like, let's go. So what, yes, everyone comes to me and you know what? I am, I'm, I, tr I do a lot of work to be positive and grateful, right? Because here's the thing I chose me and my husband, Brian, we chose to have these three children and you know what? We weren't, we can get rid of them. Like they're not going to go. Away. They're not. I mean, can't you know return what? them, right? I, I, it turns out that Target and Nordstrom do not want them back. But right. So, right. So I have done this work. I've done the work because when I had my first son, Cole, the nineteen-year-old who's um, just came back from spring break, which, by the way, he called me a couple times on Saturday night, and I'm a huge advocate of just I put I put my phone down at eight p.m. And oh, I woke up Sunday, right? It was like, well, yeah, it makes wait. a difference. My phone is not ringing after a certain hours. All my clients understand that after a certain time, I'm not time working. out, right? Yep. It's Nicole time. It's Irene time, like enough. And, but then I, my first thought was, oh my God, this guy's in jail. Be just because, <laughs> you know, but, but, but also I was like, uh, if he's in jail, it'd be fine. You know, I'll deal with it Sunday morning. So I've done the work because I am grateful that I am so strong. I am so confident that everyone comes to me, but I also recognize it comes at a cost. So right. what, do, right. Like you said, what do we need to do? What do I need to do to protect myself? I need to sleep. I need to say, for example, thanks COVID. Thanks everyone working from home today. I said to Brian, you got a GTFO. I don't want you home. I right. did a photo shoot, shoot. I did a photo shoot this morning. I came home and he is not here. And I just, I, the garage went up. His car wasn't there. And I was like, <laughs> the dog's at doggy daycare. I was like, oh my gosh, you know what? And so it's these little micro moments right. that I carve out that I engineer to protect my sanity that then allows me to be that strong default parent so right. that when everyone is coming at me texting me emailing mom mom what should we do blah, 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 that I don't have resentment and anger awesome and so with that said we're going to jump into um you got a couple um mistakes that moms make and we're going to dive into those a little bit more. And I think because this will be so helpful to a lot of moms, you know, in, in a variety of different situations, especially when you talk about when you have, you're that default mom and everything relies on you and trying to figure out how to carve time out and all that stuff. So we're going to dive into it. So let's start with the trying to be super mom, right? How important is it for a woman to first one, be authentic with themselves. And of course, um, give herself grace and permission to, so ask for help. Well, it's a million percent important to be authentic to themselves and figure out like, who the heck am I? Like, just because you're mom doesn't mean you're dead. Right. Like, this is it. This is your life, mom. Look in the mirror and let's figure out and let's, let's lean in. And I feel in my coaching practice, I find a lot of moms, they feel they should be, they should be, and they should want to be the end all be all to their families, right. whether they work or not. And it's impossible. Right. I'm here to say it's possible to do it all and have it all, but you have to advocate for yourself. You got to have the confidence. You got to have the balls to seek out support. Right. I have a lot of people in my village and I love those people. And you right. know what's even better about it? My kids have even more people to love them. They don't just oh. have me and Brian. Right. And I, I, like, there's no guilt because they feel they, they get different love and support from all right. the people in our village. And because the kids feel supported, they have structure, they are loved this allows me and Brian to go do the things that we need to do. How about to keep, how about to fill that grocery bill, right. or the refrigerator? Right. Like that is no joke right now, people. Oh, you no. Know, <laughs> give me a break, right? I mean, it's disgusting. Yeah. Like, when is this going to end? That's a whole nother 
podcast, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's so important that moms don't feel an perfect example. Just because you stay at home does not mean you're not that, working. That you are not working. You yeah. got it. So yeah. it's so important to advocate and speak up for yourself because you know what? Your partner, you know what? They, they don't really care. They have their own stuff going on. Right. But they do love you. I mean, I hope right. they, I hope you're in a, I hope you're in a relationship where they love you and care and they want the best right. for you. Right. But so it's up to us to speak up kindly, professionally, help me, help me, right. help the family. This is, and, and you know what? I guarantee, and this is what I always say to families, you're, and, and often like, I'm kind of like a, 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 a mediator, you know, I'll right. sit in the middle of the dining room table, you know, we have mom, we have dad, and I'm, it's like a tennis game. Like, okay, now you say this and you want right. this and you want this. I'm like, you all want the same thing. And, right. and you all had the same amount of hours in the week. And so let's figure it out. Let's talk right. about it. Let's have a conversation on how we can all get it together and, and all be like, love our family relationship. Right. And, and I know not only you, you do have those stay at home moms who are, who don't have maybe a, a job or a side hustle or anything happening. They're just, you know, mom and, but, and then you have the dads that may go out and what do you say for those, you know, cause of course, a lot of times the dads figure, okay, I'm going out and I'm working, I'm coming in. And they may look at the fact that, oh, mom is just home. They don't realize that really that's a real full-time job and a whole you're cooking, cleaning, taking care. I mean, don't even talk about cooking and cleaning, but taking care of the kids in general, especially when you have younger kids, that's a that's whole, mm -hmm. that takes so much energy. No, no joke. No joke. Right. Just, it's just survival, you know, especially like the first year is complete survival. So, so what do I do with those clients? I start Saturday and that is Saturday where okay. dad gets to be one-on-one -on -one with his evil spawns and mom gets that day. Those, right? I like that. I like that. And maybe literally I'm not talking. You're going to go for 10 hours and just go hide in your car at Target. I'm talking. Maybe we just need to start for one hour and right. maybe the child is napping the whole time, but it's small incremental steps to make right. dad feel empowered and to feel in control and feel confident in his parenting skills. And I always say, especially with, with new fathers, don't, mm -hmm. don't watch that guy change a diaper. Cause I don't know about you. I did not know what the heck I was doing when I changed right? a diaper, even <laughs> though, learn. right. You got to learn. You just, it's practice. And even though it's like so frustrating to we moms, we women, where we, again, we have to set, we have to set up the beautiful story tale for them to take over. It will only help our freedom from momming. If we right. give our partners just little baby steps of what to do. So we start with Dadder Day. We leave an, a beautiful printed list of what to do and what scenario, what to expect. And then when we leave, it's not our problem. Right. And you know what? Figure it out because you know what? I figured it out. I didn't right. have anyone to lean on. My mom sucked, you know? So I, I right. was leaning on girlfriends to figure out my, like how to do this, how to do the witching hour. And then, I mean, of course, we're just going through a quick little steps. So right. we've, we've got the data day. We've got the list. We have left to do whatever it's going to do to get it together, get our mojo back. And right. then when we, when we moms walk back in the home, what's done is done. Right. I bet a bomb has gone off in your home. There's right. stuff, there's stuff everywhere. What's done is done. Don't be a dickhead. Be appreciative. Be grateful that you got time away and we will, and we will improve upon it next Saturday. Okay. I think that, 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 that there, I think it, in itself, I think that's where we as moms make that. I mean, we come home and everything is also, well, why didn't you do this? No, why you? right. And of I've course, been of guilty of that. So I think that's a good pointer there um, to help change that, you know, dynamic there. Okay. I think that's good. I like that whole idea of that day, but I always say, you know, have that day where you just leave and just say, you know, when you leave, it's on them. And when you come back, okay. But that little tidbit there that you added, I just think. Just like that. zip, zip, yeah. zip, 
Definitely. And as we, you know, you talked about that downtime, being able to take those incremental time. What do you say to moms? And, and this feeds into your, your, your tip about not taking enough downtime. What do you say, you know, to those moms who, what's your advice to, for them to go about killing that pleasure guilt um, when it comes to prioritizing their well-being or taking those little incremental time for themselves, those me time? Well, I know. Well, I mean, obviously it's such an important question. It's so, so hard. All I can say is from my personal experience and working with other Git moms is if something isn't working, if you are feeling anxious and nervous and you can't, and you feel you can't trust others to love and take care of your child if you can't sleep i i'm here to say something's not going well and right. and and why do you want to live this way why why do you want to look in the mirror like again just because we're moms doesn't mean we're dead why do you want right. to look in the mirror and and you think oh i need an under eye cream because i i look horrible no you know what it's as simple as saying to yourself this is no way to feel because right. again, right. We only have 18 years with our kids right. and I'm not saying it's easy to get off the merry-go-round. I had, I was there, I was there for two years. I couldn't stop swiffering and cleaning. I, you know, all those dishes had to be clean. Like I mentioned before, right. you know, I couldn't take a nap. I couldn't even go to bed at night. And I went, I started meditation. I went to therapy and, you know, she's, she's like, what's going to happen if, if you go to sleep and there's dishes in the sink and I, and I was like, Oh God, you're right. Absolutely nothing. You know? Um, but sometimes it just takes that like odd conversation to like snap you out of the funk of, of this parenting merry-go-round. And I just go back to start with one small thing a day, right? Maybe you feel I can't rest until I binge whatever show. Well, say to yourself, what, what's going to happen if right. I go to bed and then I just pick it up tomorrow night, you know, it can happen. Just say to your best friend, don't, you know what? I went to bed. I can't compete on this. I can't compete right. on this binging in the Netflix. So, um, it's not easy. It is important. You are everything to your family. And I'm here to say to you, just remember without you, your family would never exist. Right. Right, definitely. And I get that. I'm learning myself, giving myself more grace, letting things dro drop some things right. sometimes. You know, I've gotten a lot better with having to make sure that the sink is clean before I go through the day. I'll go through my work day and I was like, okay, time to finish, time to go make dinner. And that's when I'll make do the dishes and stuff if I hadn't already done them the night before. But I am getting so much better with not having to have everything around me spick and span or perfect, perfect right. uh, before, you know, I can do stuff because, you know, it drives you crazy. I think it drives us, you know, crazy. And we, we, we create this unnecessary stress on ourselves to be perfect when, when we don't have to. So of course that um, that of course speaks to the whole you know that myth you talk about that mistakes of being that the whole perfection you know thinking we have to be perfect perfect moms. Okay, so let's talk about the 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 mistake of underestimating time it takes to do things with our kids. Oh, <laughs> it's so much time, just all the time, all the time, every time. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know. Um, it's funny. I, and I'm sure you have younger kids too. Like yesterday evening, I, my little one came home and of course she has stuff. And, and I guess in their own little way, they want mom, they want mom. It doesn't matter what mom is doing. Mom is there and stuff. And I'm like, I'm on the phone. I am talking to a client right. and that's usually like, how they want you the most when before that they don't want anything. They want you. But I think for me, making time, this is why on Sundays, you know, the weekends, of course, I have very limited hours that I work with clients. And then um, the weekend is for me to spend time with my kid, being able to give her more attention and stuff. And of course, being able to carve out more times, like you said, so that you can be there for your family, so that you can also take time for yourself. So, um, you know, and I do that because I'm, I know that I want to be present in the moment when I'm hanging with her and not have to worry about everything else. And I'm not on the phone and I'm not doing everything else. We have the movie nights or whatever it is that we do. 
But I think, you know, for my little inside it, when it comes to feeling that guilt, if you be, are present in the moments when you are hanging with them, then you're able to give them your fullest so that when you have time to do the other things you got to do, that is just as important, <laughs> then you don't feel guilty. But um, let me uh, say, okay, so being mom is of course amazing. Um, you know, it's an amazing thing. And of course. how do you, um, what are your thoughts on um, the importance of uh, moms finding passion outside of just being moms? Well, I think it's everything. I think it's all about keeping the me in mommy. I think again, just because you're a mom doesn't mean you're dead. Th this morning, I I had meditated. I was making the fire. I had my um, coffee, my lemon water, and I had you know it. Just because like we're having this like easy breezy conversation, I I want to show up for myself. I want right. to show up for my brand. And so it's, it comes at a cost. It's still stressful, even though like, right. you're not, you're not scary, but right. it's still because I, I want to do a good job. I want to make myself proud. I just ran a half marathon in Paris and all I thought about, oh, was, wow. and, well, I know, right. Thanks. I've <laughs> never done anything like this. Like I am not endurance. I am just like hit float in float out. Like, let's just do a little bit here and there. And all, all the ticker tape was like, I want to make myself proud. Right. I want to be proud. And I think it's so important I don't, I don't care. Here's the thing. I don't care if you love watching Netflix and that is your passion. If that turns you on and makes you ebullient and fulfilled and rested and you're not like freaking out on your kids, then that's right. your passion, right? But I, it's so important to find your passion because what's going to happen is those evil spawns, they're going to graduate. And, the, and right? then what? they're going to leave you. <laughs> they will leave you. So it's so important that we don't put all of our, like, our hopes and dreams on our kids' behavior or their sports performance because they're in charge. They're in control of that. We right. can't control that, but we can control our, like, what turns you on? Right. And if you're, and if your whole family is sleeping and on a schedule and you know what the heck Johnny needs when and why, because, oh, you know what? We always have dinner at five o'clock. Johnny's kind of like whining at 4.30 PM. Duh. Okay. We're going to have dinner at five o'clock. So when you, the family's sleeping, the family's on a schedule, then you know, when you can float in your passions. Right. And, and, and I'm, I'm the only parent coach out there who is a mom advocate. All the other parent coaches out there, like they love kids. <laughs> I don't love your kid. I don't want to see your kid, your kids. Right. <laughs> I mean, maybe your kids. Ugly. I don't know. I don't know. Because like, but you know what? I'm a mom cheerleader. I'm here. Like, let's have a good time because right. again, without us, our families, like, hello, there'd be no family. Right. And so again, I don't care what your passion is. I just want you to have a really good time because that's right. what life is about. And once you have a child, this is it from here on out and your kids are going to leave you. So right. you want to, I always are. say, yeah, you got to find something outside. You got to find your identity yeah. um, outside of being mom and spouse, because of course, you know, for example, you know, you have an older child, I have an old, they go off, they do their thing. I don't spend that much time with my older daughter. I have to like beg her to, okay, what are you doing? They always have plans. I have the little one, she's coming up, she's 10. And she's the, even now, like we're supposed to have our days and Sundays do stuff. And half the time she's in the other room, like, okay, aren't we supposed to be in the living room doing our thing? The moment they start making their friends and stuff, they forget about us. So it's like, what do we do? You know, when they off doing their thing, how, you know, how do we go about finding our identity and, you know, um, getting realigned with the things that I that, like that, that makes word. us who we are Realign. what do you you know what do you say to parents how how do you guide them on uh, on that path of um finding their identity outside of being mom and spouse well what I say to them is let's let's start to think about like what turns you on and how can your parenting village support you right and a lot you know what I'm not so this is this is a great question because I don't have a lot of hobbies like my right. hobbies uh, like Bravo TV, that, that's my hobby. You know right. what? But but I have, that's a fine tuned skill. Like I right. have honed this <laughs> skill. I know when it's going to happen. It's going to happen after our interview. And 
it makes me like so excited. So even if, again, this is coming from a person who has no hobbies, but I feel Bravo TV is my hobby and I'm right. totally cool with that. Um, even though, right, I have three kids and a business and all these other things going on. So how do I, how do I say to those moms who are trying to find who the heck they are, take a moment, take a minute, start to think about what turns you on, what sparks joy, you know, Marie Kondo, your life. And right. it's not going to happen overnight. I was in an anxious spiral for two years until I got off, you know, the, the parenting merry-go-round and right. started to infuse the view. And, and this was before Bravo, you know, I started right. infusing <laughs> the view into my life, which now has, has turned into this Bravo empire that I'm like, so excited, you know, to watch every day. Right. Um, so I just, I think it's just so crucial for moms to feel and remember that they matter, right. that they are not dead, that mm -hmm. they count. Mm -hmm. And if something isn't working to start to speak up and say to their friends and family, right. Hey, this isn't great. I'm not so happy. I, and it's okay to say, I don't, I don't know why I'm not happy, but right. to just every day, even if it's five minutes a day, like I'm, I'm a huge advocate of hyper eating, like positive, positive books. Right. I don't know what it's doing, but I feel going back to the, yeah, the it deep, helps you to build. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just build yeah. positivity and going back. You're the default parent that when like just dumb stuff comes at me, I'm like, you know what? I'm in control. Right. And when you feel in control, then you're able to build upon those, like the next pillar of, of who am I? What do I want to do here? And maybe right. you just want to watch, you know, Bible for 12 hours. And then that, I'm totally down with that. Whatever right. turns you on. It's right. Your life. That, that's what I say too. There are the days where I just lay on the couch and it's just going to be Netflix binging whatever oh, series. And I life. don't feel guilty for that anymore because that's my time. No matter how I want to spend my me time, that's my time. And self-care is not just about, you know, doing your pedicure, manicure. Or, manicure or whatever it is. It can be just simply laying on the couch and binging a Netflix, whatever it is, whether it be Bravo TV, whatever it is that whatever. gets you going, just lay and do that. Do it. And okay. I, and I like, and then I know we want to move on. I, for the moms who say they have the guilt for the manicure or for laying on the couch, I say to, I say to them, if your child is thriving and healthy and happy, then you should not feel any guilt right. because you are the one who created that lifestyle right. for your child. And now yeah. you do you. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. So just before we close out and stuff, of course, you know, we live in a very colorful world, a lot of differences and, and everything. And you have those parents who um, believe in the idea of raising colorblind um, kids, which I feel like it's a cop out. Um, and I, I personally feel like it should be treated as an opportunity for us to maybe educate our kids on, on differences and being more conscious and embracing differences in a way that helps us to be better, more productive citizens. What are your thoughts on that? And, um, you know, how do you guide parents when it comes to that topic of race and, and, and differences? Well, I, here's the thing. It, it is, this is a, a conversation that's so important to have. I am white, you are black, and let's talk about it. And right. let's not be uncomfortable about it because right. if we as adults can't have the conversation, then right. you, you know, like Susie and, and her son, Johnny certainly aren't digging in to this like right. uncomfortable conversation. So it's definitely age specific. It is something that we parents need to educate our kids that we're all different. We all have different colors. We're all same. We all put our pants on the same flipping way. Right. And just because you look that way, you, I have hair this way, you have hair that way, you walk that way, I walk this way, we're all humans and we're all here together. And I, I feel a lot of times uh -huh. our younger kids say like, you know, five, six and older, they will ask their parents about 
colors. Right. And because the parents aren't having conversations with other colors, they just brush it on the rug because they don't want to say the wrong thing. They don't know what to say. And right. that's that's uneducated. And it is time for everyone. So for example, it's time for everyone. Just I, I want to ask you how you raise your kids or or your grandparents, you know, like your mom and then your grandparents and how we did it on our side because we're all different. It doesn't right. matter. Yeah. You, you, if you have 500 black friends and I have 500 white people, we all do it differently. Like we're all the same people putting our pants on. Right. And I, so our family, we have lived in a very white state, Vermont for four years. Our children were all raised, born and raised in the city of Chicago. You cannot look at two, uh, cult, uh, not cultures, but two cities, states with yeah, any, the different dynamics demographics yeah <laughs> right demographics like oh my goodness like whoa um and ever since 2020 and everything that has gone on in our cities i have started seeking out conversations with races that are not white because i don't understand i want to understand and i am open and i think that's like a really important thing not only about race but parenting and like just right like just let's let's different just cultures. learn. We yeah, just How can be we open. Learn? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know any. I don't know. I want to know. And just because you might say something to me, another person might say. I'm like, all right, bring it on. Like I'm a sponge. I want to learn because I don't know. I'm a white woman in America. I have privilege. The shit is handed to me, and I want to know so that I. This is like I'm like you can hear my. It like heats right. me up. <laughs> Um, just, it just, and, and I'm white, right? Right. And, and, right. I, I want to know so that I can inform my children who will then inform their children. And hopefully we can keep this flipping country moving forward, though there's things that are not going so well. Right. Right. And, and I'm here as a white person, a privilege to want to educate and help my clients, help my children understand, help me understand. Right. Because I don't understand and will right. never and understand. And Does that, that make sense? The topic. Yeah, no, definitely makes sense. Just, okay. So just ask those hard, conver- have the conversation. Right. And you know what? Yeah. You might, you're going to be embarrassed. Everyone's embarrassed. Right. But just. I think we're, a lot of times we're mostly afraid of the things that we don't understand and instead of saying, you know what, I don't understand, help me understand. And help stuff. me. We I want to understand. Afraid. And then I think, you know, in our country now is like, there's this thing where we feed on people's fears instead of, you know, opening up the conversation and having those conversation and instead of feeding on people's fears. Okay. So let's jump into, you know, to round this out, let's jump into some quick, fun, lightning round Ooh. questions. Just cool. a quick thing. Fred, the cuts wine. Favorite compliment? You're sparkly. Guilty pleasure. Oh, day drinking. <laughs> oh, I guess that uh, goes into red or white wine. <laughs> Vodka. <laughs> um, power outfit. Oh, oh, anything pink and white. Okay, awesome. All right, so um, tell us um, a bit about where to find you, what you have coming up next, you know, what you have going on. You can find me at getmom.com. So get stands for get it together, mom. And again, I'm the only parent coach in the country who is mom's cheerleader. And people often call me like the parent whisperer because everyone calls me because they're freaking out. And I just (laughs) try to like make everything more light and, you know, sparkly and and lighthearted. Um, And get mom is also on Instagram and Facebook. And hopefully I'm working on a TV show and I really want a TV show. Come on universe. Like, (laughs) let's go, let's go. Yes. Speak it into existence. Yes, exactly. And I'm working on an um, eye serum and concealer for moms on the go. Oh, awesome. When that's ready, let me know. I I don't mind sampling. (laughs) Thank you. Okay. So Erin, um, thanks for pulling up a seat and sharing your story to help our audience cultivate confidence, um, overcome fear, and of course, help define success on their own terms. And for everyone out there listening or watching, I hope this added value to your life. And thanks for tuning in.